chakra mixing. It has two guitars, this kind of a trashy guitar, and this rounder guitar. And we have bass from a mic outside the cabinet, and we have bass from a DI box. We have our vocal, and we have some backing vocals we'll come back to. We have our kick. With a bit of bleed from the other drum mics. We have a snare with a kind of a horrible ringing sound. And we've the full sound of the kit from two overheads. Okay. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at the kick. I'm just going to mute all these other channels just for a minute. So I'm going to gate it first of all. So in my browser, audio effects, the gate, gated drums is the preset. There's the preset browser. Now just drag that right onto the channel. Now it's stopped everything. You can see the peaks of the kick aren't quite getting above the threshold. Well, when they exceed the threshold is what tell the gates to leave sound through. Okay, so that's doing some work there. But it's introduced this kind of nasty kind of clicky sound at the start of the kick. So I'm going to change my look ahead. See how that sounds more organic. That clicky sound is created by the gate just opening too abruptly and not leaving the natural attack of the kick true. Okay, that's fine. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compress it slightly. I'm not going to go into compression very much here. I'm just going to use gentle squeeze. Okay. Now, here's the threshold line. I can drag that down for a bit more. I'm not going to mess with any of the controls. Next thing, I'm going to look at the EQ. So, with EQ, you don't want the EQ just for the sake. Now, one, two. You don't want the EQ just for the sake of it. Think about what have I got? What do I want? So, what have I got with this kick? It's got a nice bit of impact, could be more. It's got definition, but it hasn't really got a lot of size. Now, so the size of these real low frequencies down here. Definition is more here. But I think it's okay in that regard. Next thing I'm going to move on to the snare. I'm going to gate it as well because it's a lot of bleed. There's only so much I can do with that because once the snare is getting through, anything else that's playing at the same time is going to get through. So that means some of those symbols. Now I'm going to drag down my threshold. You can hear what I mean. You can hear the symbols getting true. Okay. I'm going to compress. This time I'm going to use the precise preset. Yeah, and it's going to be fairly gentle. It's just going to bring up the tail a little bit. Yes, it is bringing in my hat. To check that with the overheads now in a sec. First of all, I'm going to go to the EQ though. So think of every snare, you know, I should have a bit of crack, a bit of sizzle, you know, a bit of thump, a bit of impact as well. Well, not thump, just a bit of slap. We're talking some low energy here, maybe in the very low mids. 
No, the sizzle is going to be up around this area up here. But we also have this kind of rogue tone and this snare. Have a listen. This kind of ringing tone to it. It really sounds like somebody's playing the snare inside a giant Pringles tin or something. So let's try to deal with that using the EQ. And just a simple trick, just make it worse. And then once you've made it worse, you know where the frequency is that the problem is, so you can make it better. Now, you hear the way it just kind of jumps out at you, that tone there. Okay, that's the tone we don't like. So again, just sweep. And you should find one point where a problem tone will just jump at you. So now we've isolated where that is. I can just go to the gain controls of this EQ and just pull that sound back down. Let's have a listen. Okay, so that leaves the other parts of the snare sound to get through. Yeah, but it's also cutting fairly widely around the problem area. Now I can narrow up this trench by going to the Q control. Until I hear it coming back in a bit too much. Okay, that's all right. Now I'm gonna give a bit of boost to the bass region. See what that does to the size of the snare. Now, it sounds pretty choppy with the gate, so I'm going to hear how it sounds with the overhead, because I can't really boost the sizzling part of the snare without boosting the hi-hats as well. Have a listen. So I'm just hoping some of that snare sound is after coming through on these channels. So let's have a look at them. I'm going to group these two together, so I'm going to select one. Press Control on PC, Command on Mac. Select the other, right click, group tracks. And then I'm gonna pan these slightly to each side. This, yeah, so listen to this by itself for a sec. So there's a couple of things I can do with the pan. And like that. That's kind of what the drummer here is, you know, you, if you imagine the band in front of you, it's not going to be that wide a stereo image. Maybe this one is a little bit louder, compensate. Okay, there's an okay snare sound in there. I'm going to get an EQ8, I'm going to drop it on the snood group. That's why I rename that while I'm here. Overhead group. Now, I'm going to get rid of the very low end from this because I want it completely clear for my kick channel. Now, there's a lot of splashiness coming through on those cymbals, so I could tame them a little bit. Sorry about that, my controller got a bit messy. All right, have a listen to that again. Okay, I think the snare is doing a bit better now. All right, leave those overheads up and I'm gonna join in kicking the snare. bringing them up loud enough so that they're doing their job. If I put them up too loud, it's going to make these seem small, so I'm going to turn these up. If you don't have it too quiet, it's just going to seem wimpy, so I'm looking for a sweet spot. Not too small. Okay, 
That snare still sounds pretty terrible. Not get much in the way of toms either. Okay. Now, I'm going to add a drum bus and see if I can just compress all these together to just salvage something decent out of it okay so i've added a new channel to do it again a couple of ways i can do that how to use this right click menu on the header of the tracks i guess there's my new audio track i'm just going to rename this renaming isn't important what i'm going to use this for is just like this see this group track where the both of these kind of root through this and there's another master volume for this I want that for all of the drums because I want to be able to process the drums all together the way I process these overheads together this track but I can't put a group inside another group in live but I can create these bus tracks and it's just an ordinary track but I'm going to root the sound of these channels these three into this new track so I'm going to open up my IO menu See, I have these sections here, audio two. So audio two, drum bus, audio two, drum bus. Then on this one, I'm going to do audio two, drum bus. I'm going to leave these as audio two groups. So both of these are going into this channel and then they're going to root this channel. Okay, the last step I need to do is I need to turn off the external in because I want to listen that, that to listen to a sound card. And I'm going to just set monitor in here. So now I should be able to get everything coming through on this. Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to go to my glue compressor. And I'm after impact here, so let's go make it loud. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the guitar, or maybe I'll do the bass. Now with the bass and the bass, the eye, I'm either going to use one or the other, but I'm sure way in class I can combine them, but I'm just going to use the bass in this regard, this stage. Now, have a listen to what we have with the bass. We have a handy way we can just mute all the drums just by muting the drum bus. Bass has to form the foundation of the track, you know, it's the very bottom of the whole mix. So, a uh, question you need to ask is this bass filling out that area okay? Will it fill out the area okay? And also, it needs to have some sort of mid range presence so people can kind of tell what the bass, the bass is playing. Or at least that's one choice you can make. So, let's have a listen to the sound of the drum. Straight away, I'm thinking that's not that bad. Certainly, filling out the bass at the very low end. And a little bit of boost here. Nice day for that 1.2 tip. Certainly helps it go through a little bit better. And sometimes it's a good idea to get rid of the really, really, really low end. It's because it's not helping the mix, so if it's not helping, chances are it's hurting or at least sucking up a bit of energy. Now I can move these tracks around very easily. Okay, so I'm going to put that there just so I know it's done. And I'm going to look at the first guitar. 